Hey, you didn't think I was gonna leave you hanging, did you? Dexter, can you say hi? Hi. You see yourself? Oh, oh too. Look. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Stay still, you. <laughs> Stay still. <laughs> <laughs> this is very unprofessional. Come on. <laughs> Alright, fine. We'll do it like this. <laughs> How are we supposed to do this on camera? No, don't, don't, don't. This wasn't a good idea. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning good. And please ignore my son behind me that is typing on the keyboard. I just want to get this shot really, really quick because I don't have a lot of time. So no doubt on the Portal Effect episode, you saw a whole bunch of requests asking how to create the portal. So that's what we're doing today, guys. Now in order to complete this effect, you need a copy of Trap Code Particular. No two buts about it, guys. Apart from that, you're all good. Now let's get to work, shall we? Okay, guys, here we are in After Effects. I do. Yep. Now, let's build this friggin' portal. First off, let's open a new composition. Let's name it, say, Portal Base. Make it full HD. Give it a time of, say, seven seconds, and hit OK. From there, I'm gonna head up and add a solid. Make it kind of a gray color. That'll do. And let's hit OK. Next, let's head up, grab the pen tool, and draw a very rough portal-shaped mask that in no way looks like anything else at all. We'll then draw a second mask on the inside of our first mask, giving it a bit of a border. And if we collapse down the mask menu by hitting M on the keyboard and change the mask mode on that one to subtract, you can see we now have ourselves a hollow shape. Let's follow that up by hitting F and feathering out both masks around 75 pixels. Now that we have our mask settings collapsed, let's expand mask two around 20 pixels or so, just to soften it overall. Okay. That's one layer down, gang. Let's now duplicate that solid by hitting Control D. And then on the lower layer, we'll delete mask one, our bigger mask. We'll then jump into the mask settings on that layer and change that mask from subtract to add. And then let's head up to layer, solid settings and change that solid to a black. From there, let's hit F and change that feathering so it's down to around 18. Next, Let's duplicate that solid, and then on that lower layer, we're going to select it, head up to layer and solid settings, and change this solid to a baby blue. Let's then hit F and feather it out around 100 pixels. We'll then follow that up by expanding the mask out to 40 pixels. So you can see now we have this blurry, misshapen object that looks, well, quite terrible. Uh, let's keep going, shall we? Let's head up to the top layer, select it, head up to effect, noise and grain and add ourselves a fractal noise. Let's set the contrast to 190, the brightness to 43. We'll then collapse down the transform settings and I'm gonna set the rotation to 44. Now there's no need to do this. I just thought it looked a little bit better like this. From there, let's head to evolution, hit the stopwatch, head all the way to the end of the comp and set it to two. This just gives us a little bit of organic movement and it'll add some color depth to our particles. From there, let's head up to effect, color correction and add ourselves a photo filter. Let's select custom from the drop down menu and make it say a slate gray. I'll then turn off preserved luminosity and crank this up to around 55%. Now this part is essentially a way for us to control the color balance of the particles quickly in particular later. You can essentially say, oh, those particles look a bit too white then you can jump in here and crank that amount up, or you can say they're too dark and just lower it back down again. Alrighty, let's finish this layer off by changing the transfer mode to multiply. Done. Next layer. Okay, let's add ourselves a fractal noise to this layer as well. There we go. This time though, I wanna start the contrast on 179, hit the stopwatch, head to around the two second mark and change it to 134. Now guys, I'll explain why we're doing this a little later. Let's then crank that brightness down to minus 87. Next, let's collapse the sub settings down 
and we're going to change the subscale to 10. This will make sense as well in a second. We'll then use the same evolution animation as the previous layer. Hit the stopwatch at 0, head all the way to the end of the comp and set it to 2. And once again we're going to change that transfer mode to multiply. As you can see now, this allows the blue from the bottom layer just to subtly peek through the black. And animating that contrast allows that peaking to lessen at the point where our actor begins to emerge from the portal. Now our last step on this layer is to head to effect, blur and sharpen at a fast box blur. And all I'm going to do is just increase this to 1, just to soften that noise a little bit. Now believe it or not, we're done building this. Now we have to quickly animate it. For starters, I'm going to select all three layers and trim them to start a few frames later than the comp. That way we have a few frames before our portal begins. Now from there let's keep all three selected and hit S to bring up scaling. I'm going to bust all three down to say 10% and hit the stopwatch. From there let's move forward say 17 frames or so, there we are. I'm then going to unlink the scaling so we can animate the horizontal and vertical independently. I'll set the horizontal to say 30% and the vertical to 30.9%. This gives us a little bit of stretching on the vertical. Next, let's skip ahead, say, to the 40 frame mark, and then I'm going to expand all three until they consume the borders of the frame, like so. I'm then going to jump ahead to the 100 frame mark, and I'm just going to shrink the size slightly. No more than just a few pixels. This just sells the idea that the portal is beginning to collapse. From there, I'm going to jump ahead to frame 150, and bust that scale down to a much smaller size, like so. I'll then skip ahead about 6 or 7 frames and shrink it again even smaller. And then finally, I'll head to the end of the comp and set all three layers to zero. Now if we check out a preview, believe it or not, this piece of crap is actually the base to make a sweet portal animation in particular. Crazy, huh? Alright, let's start making this portal and stop looking at this turd. Alrighty, let's get started. Let's open up a new comp, call it Portal Final, and give it a time of say 8 or 9 seconds and hit OK. Let's then grab our portal base comp and drop it in. Let's also make sure that you click this button to make it a 3D layer so Particular can actually see it. And then we can turn it off so we don't have to look at it. Next, let's grab a new black solid from up here call it a meter, all in lowercase, and hit OK. From there, we'll head up and add ourselves trap code particular. Now we'll first start by increasing the particle amount to around 100,000. Next, we'll set the emitter type to layer, keep the velocity at 100, set the random to 50, the distribution to 5, and keep motion to 20. Let's now fix up those layer settings. We'll set the layer emitter to portal base, and the layer sampling to particle birth time. Let's now move on to particle settings right here. Let's set the life to 0.5, the life random to 5, and the particle type to cloudlet, and we're going to increase that particle feather all the way to 100. We'll then set the size to 25, the size random at 100, and with size over life, I just kind of hacked away at it a little until it resembles this mess. Whether you did this or not, totally up to you gang, I just wanted to add a bit of randomness to the size. I then set the opacity random at 5, I then collapsed down the opacity over life, and from the preset menu, I went with this mountain looking dude. We'll then move on to shading, and of course, we turned on shadow let for main to add some much needed depth to our fluffy smoke. Let's then drop down the shadow let settings, set the opacity to 7, and adjust the distance to 125. Now guys, feel free to preview this entire comp at any time during the build process. Me personally, I'm going to power ahead because I know that physics are next and that's where you can really play and change the look of this thing. Okay, so physics, right? Let's start by setting the gravity to minus one and then we'll drop down the air menu. Let's set the spin amplitude to 30, the spin frequency to 15, and then we'll follow it up by setting the wind X to 10, the wind Y to minus 10, and then we'll come down to the all important wind Z. In this case, the wind Z is what we'll be using to make our particles look like they're being sucked back into that black portion. So let's make it 10, hit the stopwatch, then we'll skip ahead to around the halfway point in the comp, and then we're gonna crank this thing 
all the way down to minus 200. From there, we're gonna skip ahead to the end of the comp and set it down again to minus 300. And our last step here is to head to rendering right down the bottom and turn on motion blur like so. The end result gives us our portal effect. Well, almost. I did one last thing, just a cherry on top. Just a little pucker. Eject you gunt. <laughs> exactly. Let's head up, grab an adjustment layer, from there, I'm gonna head to Effect, Distort, and add a Liquify. Let's set it to Pucker, increase the brush size to around 400, and then head into the middle and give it a good old squeeze right in the center. Now guys, you might need to click down a few times to get the desired Pucket effect we're going for, since we're dealing with a lot of particles and, you know, render times. Now that looks pretty good to me. Let's head around to the one second mark right here and I'm gonna drop the distortion percentage down to 20% and hit the stopwatch. We can then skip ahead to just before the end of the comp, around about this three quarter mark here, and let's crank it up to around 40%. This way, the pucker increases over time and looks like it's collapsing around the portal as your actor has emerged. We can then head to the end of the comp and crank it all the way up to 100%. The end result of all those steps is a pretty sweet portal animation. Now gang, you don't have to be limited by color or the shape I've shown here, or basically the build of the portal itself. You can really make whatever color or shape you want or just play around with all these particle settings. The sky really is the limit and I urge you to experiment here. Because that my friends, is how you make a Thanos portal from scratch. And that is another effect. Done. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. Yes, I did that joke again. I love that clip from Aldo Jones. And yes, that is Peppa Pig playing in the background. It's the only thing that got him to be quiet. And it looked... Now guys, one really exciting thing that I didn't mention in this tutorial is that you can drop any shape layer, any logo, any bit of text into that portal base layer and it will create particles based on that. Just for an example here, I dropped the Film Learning logo in there and I created a really quick animation in no time at all. And say I dropped this My God cartoon in here as well. You can see that if we jump back, the animation has updated and those particles are now producing a Lawrence cartoon. My God. Pretty awesome, huh? And it really just shows how quick and versatile this effect is. But once again, guys, that is my time. If you did enjoy this custom build episode, please smash that like button. I really do appreciate it. And hey, if you are new here, why not join the 97,000 people that have also clicked that subscribe button? Yes, it's gone up already a thousand from just three days ago. And make sure you click that notification bell so you don't miss a single film learning episode. I've got two other episodes right over here. I've got a playlist right up here. And I've got my social media crap above my head. And until I see you again, guys, keep learning.